serving our USA area. And in our diocese, there are th three active SARA clubs right now. In just a second, I'll tell you, well, what does a SARA club do? But there are three clubs, one in the Northland, up at St. Andrew's Parish they meet, one downtown that meets at Good Council, and then our SARA club, the Southeast Kansas City SARA club, serves 17 parishes in the Southeast area from Nativity and Independence down to Harrisonville, uh, our Lady, uh, so Our Lady of Lourdes, and from Saint Sabina over to Blue Springs. So we try to do some things with the vocation office on, on behalf of the bishop. We have his full permission. So uh, what I'd like to answer is first question on my little notes here: What is a Sarah Club? Well, Sarah Clubs are known worldwide for the efforts to foster and affirm vocations. Now, it'd be vocations to the Catholic priesthood and religious life. We also support those who are discerning, those that are in preparation and formation or in their stages of religious life, but then also to encourage those who are active and those that are retired. You've had Father Ernie, which will be here tomorrow. He's back, I guess, for this period of time in June. And so um, those that are retired, we reach out to them, we affirm them, we send them notes of appreciation on their anniversary of their ordination, even though they're currently retired. So we do things to encourage that. So those are the things we do in close cooperation with the diocese, the, with our bishop, and the Office for Priestly Vocation and for Consecrated Life. So who are Sarans? Well, we are men and women dedicated to the objectives of the international organization. We serve the mission of Sarah International in our diocese. Oh, by the way, something I missed. We are in the process at our district level for all the clubs reforming the Sarah Club in the St. Joe area. So we want to widely support vocations throughout the diocese. Now, uh, members of the Sarah Clubs continue to grow in the, their Catholic faith through educational programs. Each of our meetings, we meet twice a month, generally. Some, during summer months, we meet once a month, but, and there's other activities we do. But, each of our meetings will have a program, and I'll refer to one of those a little bit later here, the one we had recently with our diocesan vicar, vicar general. What do we do? Well, um, a couple of things I'd like to mention first is while he was pope, St. John Paul II said, Sarans accept as their responsibility the promotion of vocations to priesthood and religious life. They possess a deep appreciation for the ministerial priesthood as being essential to the church. Sarans have been generous in offering their support to those who hear the call to serve the Christ, to serve the church in priesthood. He also said, for all of us, everyone in the church has a responsibility to pray and support our priest and our religious and our deacons, isn't that right? He's deacon over there, Deacon Paul. Uh, a matter of fact, on the 18th, our diocese will be ordaining 16 new permanent deacons. And you're all invited to St. James Parish up north, 10 o'clock for that wonderful celebration. Is that good, Deacon Paul? All right. So, uh, we also have an Episcopal advisor, all organizations, particularly those like Sarah, that's aggregated to the Vatican through the Office of Priestly Vocations, we have an Episcopal advisor. Well, Cardinal Collins in Canada is our Episcopal advisor, and he has started most of the meetings we've had with him in the last couple of years, that action, what we do, follows prayer. 
And so the prayer, the Sarans make a commitment to pray daily for the priests and those in formation for the religious. Now, uh, one thing for us all to realize is things are changing. In 1955, there was a survey and they followed it up each year since then. And the USA Catholic population has doubled in that period of time. But yet the priesthood, we haven't kept up with the need to serve all of these people the same way. So one of our challenges and yours in praying for priests and religious is to encourage young people to be open to God's call. And that's one of our big challenges now. Last month, uh, the Vicar General, Father Charles Rowe, was a guest speaker at our meeting, and he shared that in our parish, we have 85 parishes and 10 missions. For this number, we have 70 active priests serving the diocese. About 67 of those are available for active pastoral ministry. Others have administrative responsibilities. Some priests are actually serving two or three parishes at one time. Some parishes are served by religious orders. Uh, the Benedictines from uh, Conception help us in the Northland. The Precious Blood priests help us but the religious orders are also sharing with the bishop that because of the aging out of their religious, they aren't going to be able to help us as much as before. So uh, basically one of the things that I'm here for today is to say that the only mission of Sarah, while there's other Catholic organizations, Knights of Columbus, which we partner with on events, have many charisms that they work for but Sarah Club is focused on priesthood, religious life, and those discerning. So we as Sarans are dedicated to helping create or develop a more positive culture in families, in parishes, by offering programs that can be used in parish schools, school of religion, confirmation programs, and also locally and nationally, we're involved in a program called the Newman Connection to connect our graduating high school seniors with their college campus Catholic ministry, their parish away from home, to help them keep their faith. 80% of our young adults stop practicing the faith in their college years. That's been too consistent for too long. We're trying to make a difference in that area through this work. Uh, we are work, we are approved, and we are supported, of course, for, by the bishop. In order for the Southeast Kansas City Sierra Club to continue to grow, to be able to serve, to do the work we've done for the past 30 years, we need to increase our membership. And I thank Father Joe Charvel and the Deacon Paul for allowing us these few minutes to talk. We're at a, we have a display at the back where you first came into church. We have pictures of all the 12 seminarians plus two additional for religious orders seminarians that we'd like to share with you. Take a picture of these young men home with you and pray for them. But we'd also ask that you be open to considering offering some of your time to become part of our ministry, our mission, uh, fellowship with like-minded Catholic adults. And so if you have questions, my wife and I, Katie and I will be back at the table after mass and have some information to share with you, some things you can take home and pray about. Thank you very much, and thank you again, Father Charbel. Good evening. Welcome to St. Margaret of Scotland Church. Our Mass intention for this Mass is for the people of St. Margaret of Scotland Parish. Please take a moment to silence all your cell phones. A few announcements. St. Margaret will be volunteering at One City Cafe at the Bishop Sullivan Center this Tuesday, and we need your help. If you can join us, please contact Deacon David or the parish office to sign up. The carpool will leave from the church at 3.20 p.m 
and will return by 6.45 p.m. Liturgical ministers, please turn in your unavailable dates for July and August by this Friday, Ju June 17th. Next weekend is our monthly food drive supporting local food pantries. Thank you for your generosity. Please pick up a copy of the bulletin or read it online for more parish news. Let us take a few moments of prayer, prayerful silence before we begin. Please stand and take a moment to greet everyone around you. Our opening song is number 483, Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty. We begin our prayer in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. I welcome each and every one of you to St. Margaret's on this, the Feast of the Most Holy Trinity of God, Father, Son, and Spirit. As we prepare to enter into that relationship that God has with, with themselves and with one another and with us with one another. Let us call to mind our sins, our failings, and especially our need for God's mercy. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You sit at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life.
Let us pray. <clears throat> God our Father, who by sending into the world the word of truth and the spirit of sanctification made known to the human race your wondrous mystery. Grant us, we pray, that in professing the true faith, we may acknowledge the trinity of eternal glory and adore your unity, powerful in majesty, through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. A reading from the book of Proverbs. Thus says the wisdom of God, the Lord possessed me, the beginning of his ways, the forerunner of his prodigies of long ago. From of old I was poured forth, at the first before the earth. When there were no depths, I was brought forth. When there were no fountains or springs of water, before the mountains were settled into place, before the hills I was brought forth. While as yet the earth and fields were not made, nor the first clods of the world. When the Lord established the heavens, I was there. When he marked out the vault over the face of the deep, when he made firm the skies above, when he fixed fast the foundations of the earth, when he set the sea for the sea its limit, so that the waters should not transgress his command. Then I was beside him as his craftsman, and I was his delight day by day, playing before him all the while, playing on the surface of his earth, and I found delight in the human race. The word of the Lord. Thank you. 
A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, therefore, since we have been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Through him, we have gained access by faith to this grace in which we stand and we boast in hope of the glory of God. Not only that, but we even boast of our afflictions, knowing that affliction produces endurance, and endurance proven character, and proven character hope, and hope does not disappoint, because the love of God has been poured out into our hearts through the Holy Spirit that has been given to us. The word of the Lord.
The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said to his disciples, I have much more to tell you, but you cannot bear it now. But when he comes, the spirit of truth, he will guide you to all truth. He will not speak on his own, but he will speak what he hears and will declare to you the things that are coming. He will glorify me because he will take from what is mine and declare it to you. Everything that the Father has is mine. For this reason, I told you that he will take from what is mine and declare it to you. The Gospel of the Lord. Well, Trinity Sunday has always been one of those Sundays that I dread preaching at, just so you know. And that was because it was one of the hardest classes I took in theology school. When I was in Toronto, we had a, a semester all on the Trinity, and it was discovering what what it was all about, you know? Who is the Father, who is the Son, who is the Spirit? How are they related, how are they one, how are they three? You know, and it just got really confusing. And I kept that confusion up for the first few years after ordination, trying to explain it like I, I had been taught in theology school. And then it hit me, why are you doing this? It's something that can't be explained. Even in theology school, we never came to a definitive answer. This is the Trinity. All we could do was talk about relationship. And that's what I want to talk to you about today. Is about the relationship that God the Father, Son, and Spirit have with one another the relationship that we have with them and the relationships that we form because of them with each other. So first the relationship of God Father and Spirit, God the Father, the Son and the Spirit. Each one represents a facet of what God has done in the world over the years and continues to do. God continues to create as he did with the world and the universe and all of us and all of those people who have come before us and all of those who are yet to come. God is the one who creates. God is the one who redeems. Each one of us has been forgiven of our sins because of the great love that Jesus has for each one of us. And God is the one who continues to inspire us with his very spirit to go forth and to make his kingdom real in our world by the actions that we do, the words that we say, and the relationships that we embark on in this world. The Trinity embarks on each one of us as well. The Trinity affects you and I. Because in our relationship with one another, in our relationships that we have with one another, we show the value that we place on the Godhead that has created us, redeemed us, and continues to sanctify us. Think about the times, the times in your own lives when you have witnessed creation. How many have witnessed creation? A 
baby being born? That, that was what I was thinking, you know? Have you ever seen parents, when a baby's being born, has been born, and they have that look in their eyes? This is life. This is gift. This is love. This is responsibility. Have you ever had the experience of recognizing an act of forgiveness? Perhaps someone you hadn't even thought about gives you a call or comes to visit you or sends you a text and said, remember when I'm really sorry and changes your world. It changes your outlook and it changes your relationship with that person that might have been damaged. Think about the times, we just heard it in the announcements today, about when you were inspired to go and do something for others. Like volunteering to serve dinner at One City Cafe. Or as Katie's mom came and volunteered to sing today because everybody, all the other cantors weren't around. Or as Mary comes and gets in her walker and rumbles up to the piano and does this out of love. That is the spirit working, folks. That's the spirit working. And you have to, we all have to, I shouldn't say you, we have to recognize that work of the spirit in all that we do every day of our lives and acknowledge it and let it go. Let it go forth from our lives into the lives of people we touch. Then we will know about relationship, about the Trinity. Then we will know about what it means that the Trinity loves one another in a unity that we can't possibly understand, but we can experience it. Then we can know what God truly looks like and feels like because we act like God. And so this day, as we celebrate Trinity Sunday, we're not celebrating something, a doctrine that we read about in the profession of faith every Sunday. That's not what it's about. It's about how we relate to one another, how we relate to God, and how we see God relating to one another to inspire us to be more closely united to him who created us, redeems us, and sanctifies us each day. God bless you all. We now stand and make our profession of faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. 
I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead, the life of the world to come. Amen. My dear brothers and sisters, as God's holy people inspired by the Holy Trinity of God, let us lift up in prayer the needs of our church and our world. For the church and her leaders, that all may reflect the wisdom of the Father, the love of the Son, and the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For an increase in vocations <coughs> to the priesthood, diaconate, and religious life. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our country and those who have been elected and appointed to lead us, that they may be filled with wisdom to see the truth in all situations and compassion to act with justice. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the neophytes newly welcomed into the church at Easter, that they will be supported and inspired by their parish communities to continue learning and live lives of faith, hope, and love. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who are preparing for marriage, that God will form them into community of life, strengthen their commitment to each other, and help them to encounter Jesus in their love for one another. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the sick, the lonely, and forgotten, <coughs> the unemployed, and all who suffer, that they may be filled with the life of the Trinity and experience the loving presence of God's people. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have died, that they may now live in perfect union with the most holy Trinity. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the prayers found in our parish's book of intentions, the parish prayer chain requests the prayers in our hearts. And for the people of St. Margaret of Scotland Parish, the intention for which this Mass is being offered, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Most holy and loving God, hear the prayers of your church that we humbly place before your altar in heaven through Christ our Lord. Amen. I have already 
Pray, my brothers and sisters, that this, our sacrifice in each of our lives, may be acceptable to our almighty God. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of the the praise praise of the Lord. Amen. Amen. Sanctify by the invocation of your name, we pray, O Lord our God, this oblation of our service, and by it make of us an eternal offering to you through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For with your only begotten Son and the Holy Spirit, you are one God, one Lord, not in the unity of a single person, but in a trinity of one substance. For what you have revealed to us of your glory, we believe equally of your Son and the Holy Spirit, so that in confessing of the one true and eternal Godhead, you might be adored in what is proper to each person, their unity in substance, their equality in majesty. For this is praised by angels and archangels, cherubim too and seraphim, who never cease to cry out each day, as with one voice they acclaim. of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. Once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord. Fresh your resurrection until you come again, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, 
we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world. Bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, James, our Bishop, and all your faithful people. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with St. Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, St. Margaret, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. the one family of God, let us pray as Jesus himself taught. Our, Our Father, Father, who, who art in heaven, heaven hallowed be thy name. Thy, thy kingdom, kingdom come, come, thy will, will be done, done on earth as it is in heaven. heaven. And give, give us this, this day our daily bread, bread and, and forgive us our trespasses, trespasses as, as we forgive those who trespass, trespass against us. And, and lead us not into temptation, temptation but, but deliver us from evil. evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, graciously grant peace in our day, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. May the peace of our Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Father, may you Jesus. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. May receiving this sacrament, O Lord our God, bring us health of body and soul as we confess your eternal Holy Trinity and undivided unity through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Could I ask you to be seated for just a few seconds? First of all, I appreciate Homer Radford and uh, telling us about Sarah. It's a great organization uh, promoting vocations to the priesthood religious life and the diaconate, um, if you're interested in it, and I hope that you are, uh, because we all need people 
who can pray for us, who can support us, in, uh, especially in vocations uh, to this life. Uh, secondly, to that end, um, you know, we all come to, all of us priests, come at a beginning and come at an end. And so this will be my last weekend with you um, as pastor. Uh, I will be here for a couple other Wednesdays until the end of June. And then Father uh, John Boulderson will be uh, taking over uh, for this parish. I will be at Holy Spirit Parish uh, on a full-time basis, so it's not very far away. Um, and the, it's been an honor, really an honor, to serve you. I know it's been a short time, and we've hardly got to know each other, but it truly has been an honor to serve this community and to watch you, watch you grow and thrive you know, in the spirit of God that God has given you. So thank you from me. Thank you, Father, and thank you for your vocation and your service. Also, along with that, uh, the bishop has asked David and I to assist the people of Our Lady of Lourdes down in Harrisonville. In my particular case, uh, basically just liturgically on Sundays. In my case, I'll be assigned half time here, half time down to Our Lady of Lourdes. David will be still here full time, assisting when needed down there. This is a liturgical assignment, uh, just to go down, help with the Mass, and, and occasionally do a communion service. My home parish is St. Margaret. I'm not going anywhere. Some people may wish I was, but no, this is it. But so that if you hear that, no, I'm not going anywhere. I, the diaconate is a servant ministry. We are the grunts of the church. And so they ask us to serve sometimes other places. I've been blessed to serve here fully for 13 years. And so I will share that. I'm an acquired taste. They may not like it. You never know. Anyway, David will help when assist. But if you hear any other rumors, no. We're not going anywhere. We've been asked to help. Okay, and that is what we're doing. Let us stand. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you all, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Mass is ended. Let us go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. for the